So we're going to start part 17 of the Forster Andrews organ installation restoration here at Tango Towers Private Chapel. Having French polished the stop jams, done the bushings in them, there's still the, um, the formers um, in the right hand one, and those bits at the bottom, and also if I swing the camera around, the bottom bit here of that console. So I'm going to screw these together and we'll fit them onto the organ. Okay, so we've put the first two screws of the console in. And so the next thing to do is to start on the first keyboard, which of course is the lowest one. Now if you look at the sides, the left hand side is the one you can see and the absolute front, you'll see they've been stripped of paint. It had been done in wood grain, but the paint underneath is olive green. The whole organ is supposed to be olive green, and so that is the paint it's going to be. Now, it's very rare I see a painted organ, they're nearly all French polished, but this has been manufactured olive green, and like it or not, that's the color it's going to be. So here's the bottom keyboard. We know it's the bottom keyboard because it's got the register at the back with the 30 holes in it for the great pedal coupler and as this organ doesn't have a swell to pedal coupler this is the only one with that arrangement. So we'll be taking the front key slip off, uh, no, no we'll be putting a coat of polish on it, I don't think we need to, we'll look into that but the two things we are going to do is this. We have balance pins in the middle and the cloths and we have bat pins in the front in the front and all these washers are going and being replaced these look like they were done on the overhaul in 84 because they're in nice condition and you could reuse them uh, but I'm choosing to change them all at this point these look like they were went on in 1919 so we're going to I may as well get the vacuum cleaner onto this and we'll start by sucking away all those felts and we'll clean the thing up. This is actually in better condition than a lot of keyboards I see. Um, sometimes what, what I have had to do is I've had to straighten up some of the centre pins, the balance pins in the middle with a pair of pliers. I don't know why they're on one side or what, but the back pins all look good as well. So if you can see we've taken the cloths and the, the uh, the felt off. Now on some organs, and this isn't one of them, I'll show you for the demonstration, you need some fine emery paper because the back pins will, may have rusted. It's a matter of going down them all like that to get rid of that corrosion and then back the other way. It's quickest to do it, you know, just all in one operation, one direction. And then with these ones, you, you take a bit of paper off and you may, you may have to do a bit of that. But again, on this organ, this is fine. It doesn't need it. What this organ does need, in line with all the rest of them, is it needs grease on all these pins. So this is ordinary mineral grease and it's a matter of putting some between your fingers and putting it on like that. And of course we're doing that before we put the, the felts on. And that will last quite a, a time until you feel it not having any effect like there. I'll stop there, otherwise you'll be demonstrating forever. And then again on these back pins, just the same. Just do a dozen. That's on a right angle, that one. So rejoin me when I start with the felt. That's that done. So we'll start with these front felts. The piano supply houses do these as well as the organ builders suppliers. So 
for some reason, they seem to be cheaper if they say piano on them than if they say organ on them. Again, just puts. It, and although this is 150 odd years old, you know, it's a standard part. And that's. Sometimes it's one big piece of felt with the um, slits in for these pins to go through. That can be in the centre, it can be at this end. Sometimes they're leather, uh, I've seen in the centre. I think how iconic are the leather. So I'll just do those just for the demonstration. I probably haven't brought across the, uh, the ones for the centre. It's always one that escapes. I'll just have a look. So just for uh, now, we've plonked these keys with an initial quick clean into the key frame. Just wanted to make sure we've got them all and they haven't gone AWOL. And they're very difficult to read the numbers on them. Some are in Roman numerals and some are in normal writing. It looks like the upper ones have actually been changed, which is bizarre. The previous organ builder has sensibly put a marker pen across so we can actually find the pattern. And there's just one thing I did want to, to show is that there's a cleaning process at the front. I'll just take this out. Because you end up with, I've gone and done that one, that's about, I've only cleaned six, and that would be the one I'm trying to show you. And that looks another one. I'll take that now. Right. So you end up with, with grease from, people, from players' fingers onto the next note. And we actually use something that is hard to get these days, which is, where we put it? It's down on the floor. Which is this vim in powder form. So with a damp cloth, it's a matter of applying some of that. So that, you know, if you did it in liquid form, it's not going to do it. It's very difficult to get this, but I did manage to. It looks like they do it for export. So it's just a matter of cleaning that edge like that. So that's another process done. So we'll go through all those and we've got to redo the leather at the back of the keys. So that's our next process. So to start the next day on this, we've uh, had the leather clamped on the back of these overnight. You see a useful use of, a, of an old broken back four. So that's now glued on the back of there and we'll put the leather on next. As you see, these are in, are these four inch clamps? Yes. We've only got three of these four inch clamps, so we're gonna do however many at a time, two, four, six, eight, so we're doing 24 notes at a time. So this is gonna take quite a few days to do. So and there we have the two leathers, which are now on top of that felt. And that's the one I've just done this moment. So when that dries, we'll black lead it. Now we've got the rest of the keys to do, and of course there's 56 of them. So on the first 30 notes, because you've got pedal couplers, which is actually the first ones I've leathered, um, you've, got the, you've got them on both sides. So I've already done the underside of this one, which is the pedal coupler. So now I'm gonna do the top side one. So we'll just do the felt and leather once again. So that's the felt on that one. So now we'll work quickly with the hot animal glue once again. Not sure what's on camera and what isn't. With the bone rubber. over with the hot sponge which is absolutely run dry checking it's in place with the bone rubber once again there you go both sides done so we've only got 56 of these to do and uh, we'll rejoin the video I think when that is done so that's now black leaded. 
So now it's time to take the clamp off and separate them. And we've got both sides to do on this, which makes it more fun. And hopefully we'll be able to part those, just see if we can trim the edge off that one. Without cutting half the key away. So that's the idea. So we've got the top and the bottom done. I'll just make sure those edges are trimmed on the, the edge there where it's um, it was off the edge of the clamp. And uh, there we are, we've just got 56 to do. There's only the first 30, I've got it underneath as well as on the top. So as I end today, we've got the keys back in the frame, the ones which have been dealt with, as you can see at the back. And then we've clamped there's a batch there and there's two batches of eight. That's a batch of five because it takes us up to 30 notes uh, because these are done both sides because of the pedal couple. The rest of them are only done on the top side. So uh, we'll put the camera on when we get a bit further. So with that keyboard in position, but not all the notes in because they're still being clamped uh, slowly to have the uh, back leather done. I've now got the other keyboard out of storage and whoops. So that's going to want uh, exactly the same treatment and of course it's this top keyboard that we are wanting to get working because the soundboard and the equipment we've got in is for the top keyboard. Now the way these pick up at the back, so we'll just go over to this keyboard again. Right up there are the backfalls for the grate, the bottom keyboard. So there'll be trackers between there and that leather at the back of the keys that I've put on. And there's a register which holds them into position. So we've got the register, so really that's the next thing that goes in, but I'm just gonna start on this keyboard because I want to get some of these clamped so we're not wasting the, uh, the one and only left over clamp tonight. So just gonna get on and just do enough keys to fill the clamp with eight. So it's Friday night, we'll, draw, we'll come on tomorrow morning, do 10 minutes and we'll finish the video and that'll be the end of part 17. Right, so I've cleaned the top keyboard now as well and just to make sure things are fitting right, the bottom one by the way is screwed in properly, um, the we've just put in the top one, it's on dowel so it doesn't screw in, but um, what I just wanted to do was to make sure things were lining up. Well right at the back, in fact if I shine a torch And we zoom in, if I press the right button. Right at the back. There's actually a register. And can you see we've put that sticker all the way through to one of the great backfalls, which is one of the ones I made, just to make sure things are in the right place. So I can screw the register into position. So that's how, I'll just zoom back out again.
So that's how the great action operates when we get the soundboard in. It's probably be a bit more obvious. And the roller board and the rest of the action. So that note I've put in, which is that one, you can imagine that the springs in the soundboard are causing that to push down. We then have what we call touch, which is 7 sixteenths of an inch. So now when I press that note, you can see that that would move downwards and at the back it would pull down the action. So I've just put that one in just as I say. Then on the here there's a pad and this is the swell to break coupler. So we'll come into that later. The top keyboard, when there's action, we haven't got the trackers in until we get the keyboard in, these will be pushing down on the keys and when I press those notes, the trackers we've already installed will operate and you will see what happens. So we're getting somewhere, um, you never know, next week we may have enough in to play one note. <laughs> that would be fun. So there you are, this is part 17 and that's where it ends. Part 18 next. Thanks for watching.